Bisyata de Shmaya, we're going to learn Sukkah Daf Chuzayin. We're going to start from the next Mishnah, seven lines from the top of the Omid. Says the Mishnah, Rabbi Yeza Oimir, Rabbi Yeza held Arbaez Rei Sudois, Chayev Odom Lechel Besuka, Achas Bayoim Vachas Balaila. We know that Sukkah is seven days. There's an eighth day, Ishmini Atzeres, also known as Simchas Torah, in Eretz Yisrael, in Chutz Loretz. It's two days at the end. But the main Sukkot, the Yom Tov of Sukkot, is seven days. And Rabbi Yezir says that a person is required to eat 14 meals, one every day and one every evening, in the Sukkot. And that is what there's a Chiyuv, and it seems that it's a Halacha as far as Sukkot is concerned. It has to be eaten in the Sukkot. The Chachomim, the Chachomim argue, and they say, Ein Ludovar Kitzva, there's no limited amount of meals that one has to eat or not eat. And the person wants to fast, he can fast the whole Yom Tov. If you want to eat, you have to eat in the Sukkah. But there's no minimum required amount of meals. Chutz milele Yom Tov Rishon Shel Chag, besides for the first night of Yom Tov, where he's not allowed to fast, he has to have a meal. We'll learn in the Gemara where from. Bilvad, on the first night, is the only time where a person must eat, has a chiyuv to eat a meal. Another halacha says, If somebody didn't eat the Yom Tov meal on the first night of Sukkot, he can make it up until the last night of Yom Tov, including the night of Shmini Atzeres, even though obviously on Shmini Atzeres he would not be eating this meal in the Sukkot. The Chachomim, the Chachomim say that even that meal that they agree you have to have in the Sukkah, that first, or you have to have that meal the first night of Sukkah, they say, that if you miss that, if for whatever good or bad reason you didn't have that meal, there's no way of making it up. And this is what the Pasuk means, something twisted cannot always be repaired, and lack cannot always be counted, which means that some things in life, when you've missed the opportunity, you've lost the chance. Says the Gemara, my Tama de Rebeliezer. What would be the source for Rebeliezer's halacha that a person has to eat 14 meals in the sukkah over the duration of sukkahs? Says the Gemara, Teshuk and Tuduru. The Pasuk says, Basukah is Teshu Shivas Yomim. A person has to sit, he has to rest, he has to be dwell in his sukkah for seven days, what does Teishu mean? Ke'en Tuduru. In the same way as he would be living and is accustomed to be living in his home the whole year, he should be living that way in the sukkah for these seven days. Ma Dira, in the same way as when he dwells in his home, Achas Bayoim Achas Balailo, a person typically eats a meal in the day and a meal at night. Af Sukkah, so too of a Sukkah, Echa Achas Bayoim Achas Balailo, you have to have a meal in the day and a meal in the night. Verabonon says the Gemara, the Chachomim who argue and say that you do not need to eat a meal every day and every night of Yom Tov, they say, Kadira, what does it mean, Teishvuk and Tuduru? Yeah, like at home. Madira, just in the same way as in your regular residence all year round. Iboya Ochil, Iboya Loy Ochil. There's no restrictions, there's nobody forcing you to eat. You want to eat, eat. You don't want to eat, don't. Af sukkah, so to sukkahs, nami, iboy ochil, if you want to eat, ochil, eat, iboy loy ochil, and if you want, if you choose not to eat, that's also fine. Iyachi says the Gemara, according to the Rabbonon, who say that the reason you don't need to have 14 meals is because Teishvuk and Tuduru dictates that in the same way as in your home, you're not forced to eat a meal. So too on Sukkot, a filalele yom tevrish nami. If so, the first night of Sukkot also, you shouldn't be required to have a meal. And the Chachomim said that chutz milele yom tevrish and shilchag, the first night of yom tev, you do have to have a meal. Answers the Gemara Amr Beichanun Mishum Reb Shimon Ben Yitzadok. We have a separate Xeris Hakosov that requires us to eat a meal on the first night of Sukkot. Nemar kan chamisha also, but nemar bechamisha also bechag hamatzis. It mentions regarding the first night of Sukkot, the pasuk says the fifteenth of Tishri, and regarding the first night of Pesach, it says the fifteenth of Nisan. And we compare and we say tezvov tezvov. 
the, the halachas that are shared between these two n- evenings, Ma'la alone in the same way as on the 15th of Nisan, Laila Risha in Choiva, there's an absolute requirement to eat matzah on the first night of Pesach, Mikan Ve'elech Roshus, and all the other days of Pesach are not a chiyuv. Exactly where we learn that the other days of Pesach are not a chiyuv is Rashi explains here, it's from a Gemara in Psachim Dav Kufchof, and we don't need to explain it now, but it's clear in the Gemara there that only the first night of, of Pesach you actually have to eat matzah, the rest of Pesach you can't eat chomets, there's no chiyuv to eat matzah. Afkan, so to here on the 15th of Tishri on Sukkot, Laila Risha in Choiva, the first night there's a chiyuv to eat, to eat a meal, or at least to eat a kazayis, mikan ve'elech, but the rest of sukkahs, rishos, that's what the Chachomim say, there's no requirement to have a meal, you're allowed to have as many meals as you choose, as you want to have. Says the Gemara, v'hosam minolon, and where do you know by Pesach, that on the first night of Pesach, you have to eat? Answers the Gemara on Makro, it says in the Pasuk, Bo'erev toich v'matzis, that on the night of the 15th of Nisan, you have to eat matzis. Hakosov kovay choiva, the Pasuk fixed it as being mandatory, as being a requirement, a chiyuv, and we learn tezvav, tezvav, that the same applies to sukkahs, that you have to eat on the first night of sukkahs. Continues the Gemara, V'oid Omar Rebeliezer. The second statement in the Mishnah from Rabbi Yezah is that the meal of, of Yom Tov that was not eaten on the first night of Yom Tov can be made up even on the night of, of Shmini Atzeres. Asks the Gemara, V'omar Rabbi Yezah, Arbaas Yisuda is chayev Adam Lechel B'Sukkah. Rabbi Yezah in the first statement in the Mishnah says that the 14 meals have to be eaten in the Sukkah. He learns it out from Teishvuka and Tuduru. Achas bayom, achas balayla. So how can you say that you can make up that meal on Shmini Atzeres? On Shmini Atzeres you're not allowed to eat in the Sukkah. If you eat in the Sukkah in order to have a Sukkah's meal on Shmini Atzeres, you're actually over, you've transgressed the Isa of Baal Toisif. You've added on a mitzvah that the Torah didn't give you. On Shmini Atzeres you don't eat in the Sukkah. Answers the Gemara, Omar, Omar Bira, Omar Ami, Chozar Boy, Rebeliezer. It wasn't said in the name of Reb Ami that Reb Eliezer actually changed his mind and he said that we don't learn out from Teshuka and Tuduru that you have to have 14 meals over Yom Tov. They agreed to the Chachomim that the rest of Yom Tov, you don't need to have the meals. And they just say that the first meal, like the Chachomim say, the first night of Yom Tov, you have a Chiyav to have a meal. And in the same way, as the Korbonis of Yom Tov, they can have Tashlumim. So Rabbi Yezah says that so too, this first meal that's learnt out, Tesvov, Tesvov, from, from Pesach, that meal can be made up on the night of Shmini Atzeres, and it does not have to be eaten in the Sukkah. Continues the Gemara. Mashlim B'mai. On the, eight, on the night of Shmini Atzeres, you want to make up for the meal of the first night of Yom Tov that was not eaten. Akun Chachamim, there's no Tashlumim. Akun Chebeliezer, there is Tashlumim. What would you do there? Ilei Mebarifta, are you telling me that the meal, the eating a bread meal on the night of Shmini Atzeres, that will be your Tashlumim, that will be the way that you've made up for a lost meal? Suda de Yeme Ka'ochel, you in any case are eating that meal. So how is it recognizable that you're actually making up for a lost meal at the beginning of Sukkot? You're just eating the way you eat a meal every night. Elomai Yashlim. How are you actually going to be mashlim? How are you going to make up for that lost meal? Yashlim b'minei targimo. You should add extra refreshments at the end of the meal. When you're finished your regular meal, add on some fruits and some cakes and some cooked dishes. Just add on some extra foods to make up, to be, so to speak, to make up for that lost meal. Tanya na mihochi, and it also says in the Braisa, im hishlim b'mine targimo, yotza, that if you are mashlim, if you make up for that lost meal, even with just mine targimo, with added refreshments at the end of the meal that you're having in the night, then you've, you've been yotza, and it's as if you made up for that lost meal. Of course, if you're going to have, you're going to wash a second time, you're going to have a regular meal for Yom Tov, or for a regular night meal, of Shmini Atzeres, and then you're going to wash again a special meal with meat, 
and with bread in order to make up for that first meal that you lost, of course that's fine. But even if you only had mine targima, some extra refreshments, that also suffices. Continues the Gemara Shoal, Apotropos Shel Agrippas Amelech, the administrator of the king Agrippas, asked, as Rebeleza asked him as follows, Kigoyin Ani, somebody like myself, Shani Rogi Lechel, Shani Rogi Lechel, Ela Suda Achas Bayim, I only eat one meal every day. Mahu Shaoichel Suda Achas, Vepotir, can I also, you Rebeleza, and the Ra'a explains, and other Rishonim, that this obviously happened before Rebeleza changed his mind. While Rebeleza still held that you have to have 14 meals, one in the day, one in the night, so he's asking, since the reason you have to have a meal every day, the meal every night, is Teshvuk and Tuduru, because that's what people do in, during the year in their homes, and you have to do the same in the Sukkah. I, says this administrator of Agrippa Samelech, I only eat one meal every day. Can I be Yitzhak with just having one meal in the Sukkah? Omar Leir Abeliezer responded to him and says, Every other day, at a mamshich you whet your appetite, come up with a number of appetizers and delicacies, in honor of yourself, just because you feel like it. And now it's Sukkot. Can you not eat a little bit of an appetizer just for Hashem's sake to, 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 to gain this extra mitzvah and whet your appetite and have these two meals every day? And another question this administrator, this apotropos of Agrippa Samelech asked Rebeliezer. Kigoyin Ani, somebody like myself. I have two wives, Achas Betveria and Achas Betzipuri. One in Tveria, one in Tzipuri. I have two Sukkos, one built in Tveria, one built in Tzipuri. Achas Betveria and Achas Betzipuri. Can I, after one day I'll be in with a sukkah in one place, and then the next day I'm going to go to the second sukkah with my other wife in a different place. And I'll be yitza, I'll be potter, that means I will have fulfilled my requirement of sukkah. Omar Lai Rebbe Yezah says, Loi, you cannot do that. Shani Oimer, I Rebbe Yezah, hold, Kol ha mi sukkah le sukkah. If you go out of the sukkah that you were in from the beginning of Yom Tov, and you then choose your location and, re- and relocate to a different sukkah, bottle mitzvah sasha Then since the, the sukkah that you were in at the beginning of Yom Tov, you didn't stay and use that sukkah until the end of Yom Tov, you're not yoytz, and even the sitting in the sukkah you did at the beginning of Yom Tov, it's not considered that you require, that you fulfilled the required mitzvah. According to Abeliezer, you have to sit in the same sukkah from the beginning of Sukkot until the end. Says the Gemara Tanya, we learned in the Brayser, Rabbi Yezir Oimer, Ein yoytzi mi sukkah le sukkah, on sukkahs you do not leave and go from one sukkah to the next. You don't eat in one sukkah and sleep in a different sukkah. You don't use one sukkah one day, another sukkah another day. Ve'ein oisin sukkah b'choyle shel moed. And also, you don't, even somebody who didn't who for ever good or bad reason was not in a sukkah on the first day of Yom Tov. So he's not leaving a sukkah. But he now wants to build a sukkah in the middle of Cholam Maybe he, that will be fine. At least the sukkah he's going into at first on Cholam he's going to stay there till the end of Yom Tov. Says the Rebbe no. Did you, one does not make a sukkah on Cholam You have to make a sukkah before Yom Tov, and that's the sukkah you have to use for an entire seven days. The Chachomim Oimrim, the Chachomim argue, and they say, Yotzin mi sukkah le sukkah. You can go out from one sukkah to the next. Vaisin sukkah b'choy le shalmoyed. And you can make a sukkah in the middle of Yom Tov. The restrictions of Rebbe Yezer, the Chachomim argue with. Vashovin, but Rebbe Yezer agrees to the Chachomim, Sheim Noflo, that if the sukkah you had at the beginning of Yom Tov fell down, Shechoyze ruboyne b'choy le shalmoyed, that you can rebuild it on choy le and continue using it. Says the Gemara, my Talmud Rebbe Yezer, what would be the source of Rebbe Yezer that, that you don't go out from Sukkah to Sukkah and you don't build a Sukkah in Chol It says the Gemara Omar Kro, it says in the Pasuk, Chag HaSukkah is Tase Lecha Shivas Yomim. That when you build your Sukkah, it should be a Sukkah of seven days. I say Sukkah, make a Sukkah, or Uyol Shiva that you're going to use for seven days. And don't go out of your Sukkah in the middle, because then you haven't used it for seven days. And and go to another sukkah, which you also won't be using for seven days. Don't build a sukkah on Cholamoyed that you will not be using for seven days. 
the Rabbonon. The Rabbonon who say there's no such restriction, what do they do with this Pasuk of Chag HaSukah is Taselcha Shivas Yomim? What the Pasuk is teaching us is Asei Sukkah Bechag, that all seven days of Yom Tov, you can build a Sukkah. Chag HaSukah is Taselcha Shivas Yomim, you can build a Sukkah any day in the middle of Yom Tov. And you do not need to have the same sukkah for all seven days. Veshovim, this that we saw before, that Rabbi Yezah agrees to the Chachomim, Sheim Nofro, that if the sukkah fell down, Shechoyza Rabbeinu Isa Bechoyle Shel Moed, that you can rebuild it on Chol Moed, asks the Gemara Pshita, can we not take that for granted? What's the Chiddush? Says the Gemara Mao, the Teima I may have thought, Hai Achritahi, this is not the same sukkah. The original sukkah's collapsed. And now I've rebuilt it, it's like a new sukkah. And according to Rebbe Yezer, he learns out from the Pasuk of Chag HaSukkah Tatsin Choshivas Yomim that you have to have the same sukkah from beginning to end. And Ve'ein Ole Shiva, and this sukkah is not the same sukkah from beginning to end. Komash Malon, that's what the Bryce is telling us. No, Rebbe Yezer agrees that if it was the same sukkah that you had at the beginning of Yom Tov, it just collapsed and you're rebuilding it, it's considered as if it's the same sukkah and your yoytza. Tanya, we learned in a brayser. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Kashem. This is another halacha, another machlokes. We saw two machlokes in the Mishnah already between Rabbi Yehuda and the Chachamim. Number one regarding the number of meals. Number two regarding whether you can make up for a lost meal. Then we saw machlokes whether sukkah has to be the same sukkah for seven days. And now is another another discussion. Tanya Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Kashem she'ein adam yotzei chivasei b'yom tevarishin shel chag. In the same way as a person cannot be yotz on the first day of Sukkot, belulavoi shel chaveri with the arba minim, the lul of of his friend duchsivas. It says in the pasuk, velokachtem lochem b'yom arishin priet hado kapis tomorrow. The Pasuk says you have to take on the first day of Yom Tov. You have to take you, a lulav, it says, take it from yours, so t- that Mishalochem, it has to belong to you. You cannot borrow it from somebody else. Kach, so too, says Rabbi Yehazar, so too, a person cannot be Yehazar by using, by borrowing his friend's sukkah. The says in the Pasuk, Chag HaSukkais Ta'ase Lecho When you make Sukkot, it has to be yours, for you. Shivas Yomim, Misha Lecho, it has to belong to you. And the Chachomim argue and the Chachomim say no. He says, of course you can, you can borrow you somebody else's Sukkot, you can visit somebody else's Sukkot. The Chachomim, Oymrim, the Chachomim say that Afal Pisha Omru, even though the Chachomim agree that Ein Odom Yitzhi Yidei Chivosei B'Yom Tevarishon, that on the first day of Sukkot, that a person cannot be yait to the mitzvah belulavish al chaveri with a lulav borrowed from his friend. And nonetheless, aval yait se yidei chivosi besukosi shal chaveri, he can fulfill his requirement of sukkah with his friend's sukkah. Dechsev, it says in the Pasuk, Basukah is teishu shivas yomim, sit in the sukkah is for seven days. Kol ha ezrach be Yisrael, all the residents of Klal Yisrael, yeshu basukah is, should sit in a sukkah, and the word basukah is there is actually written without the vovs. It seems to be basukas, so to speak, in singular tense. We've already seen earlier on in the Masechta that when basukah is written without the vovs, it could mean a single tense. So what do we see from here? That Kono Ezrach be Yisrael, all the residents of Klan Yisrael, can sit in one sukkah. Melamed, this teaches us, she kol Yisrael ru'uyim, the whole of Klan Yisrael are fit, leishiv with sukkah achas, to sit in the same sukkah, obviously not all at the same time. They'll be making turns. However, since they'll all be using the same sukkah, it cannot be that they've all paid a pruta, the minimum amount of money, to have a share in this sukkah. A sukkah doesn't cost that much. So it's clear, it means if every person in Klal Yisrael contributed towards paying for this sukkah, each one would have a share in the sukkah, less than a share of a pruta, that's not called having a share. So it must be that some people paid for this sukkah, whereas everybody can use the sukkah. So you see clearly that a sukkah doesn't have to belong to you, you can borrow it, you can get permission from your friend to go into his sukkah. Not like Rebbe Yeza said. The Rebbe learns from the Pasuk Chag is Tase Lecho that it has to be your sukkah. The Chachomim argued and said that we see from Kol Ezrach B'Yisrael Yishu that it doesn't need to belong to you. So what do they do with the Lecho? 
Answers the Gemara, me boy, Lily, mu take Gazula. The Chachomim also agree. You cannot steal somebody else's sukkah. You can borrow it. You can get permission. But if you steal it, you're not Yetzer. Why? Because it's not yours. Avil Shaula, but to borrow a sukkah? Ksiv kolo Ezrach. That's what the Posuk is teaching us. Kolha Ezrach. Now, why we need a Posuk here to tell us that stolen sukkah, you can't be Yetzer? Why don't we take it for granted? Because there's a rule that. A mitzvah above Avera, if you do a mitzvah via transgressing an Avera, you're not Yaitza. So that is something that is discussed in Tosfos on Daftes Amad Aleph. You can look it up there. Continues the Gemara. Rebbe Yezer, according to Rebbe Yezer, who says that a sukkah has to belong to, to you, you cannot borrow it, then obviously he holds that the whole of Klal Yisrael cannot share one sukkah because there's no way that every person can have a monetary ownership on a single sukkah. There's too many people to be able to own just a simple sukkah. So what, so obviously they cannot use the same sukkah, according to Rebbe Yezer. So then what is he going to learn from the words, Kol ha'ezrach b'Yisrael yeshu ba'sukkah? He's, hai kol ha'ezrach mai ovid le? Answers the Gemara, mi boi le, le geir shen izgair b'in taim, ve katan shen izgadil b'in taim. What happens if somebody converts on chol What happens if somebody became a biblically declared Godel, he's now an adult, Minatera, it's not just his birthday, but he's also got the Simonim, the two hairs, the two Cyrus, and now in the middle of Sukkot, he's now Chayv Basukkah. Is he allowed to build a Sukkah in the middle of Sukkot? So Eliezer says yes. Kolo Ezrach B'Yisrael Yeshu Basukkah is anybody who's now joined Klal Yisrael can build a Sukkah when he joins. Even though normally Rabbi Eliezer says you need a Sukkah for the whole seven days, this Pasuk says that if you're a freshly joined member of Klal Yisrael, Either you became a godl or a geir, you can build a sukkah in the middle of Yom Tov. V'rabonon. Rabonon, kivon she'om ro'isen sukkah b'choy le'yishel mo'yed. Since the rachachomim in any case hold, anyone can build a sukkah on chol ha'moyed, lo'is shechkra. I don't need a special posuk to say that somebody who became a godl or somebody who converted will should be able to build a sukkah. Of course he can build a sukkah. It's only Rebbe Yezer who says that normally a person cannot build a sukkah on chol ha'moyed. He learns from this posuk that if you've just joined Klal Yisrael, then you can. Continues the Gemara Ton Rabbonon. Maisa Berebi Loi Shaholach Lahakbil Pnei Rebbe Yezer Rabbi Belud Beregel. We know there's a mitzvah to go and visit your Rebbe on Yom Tov. So Rebbe Loi went to visit his Rebbe, Rebbe Yezer, who was in Lud at the time on Yom Tov. Omer Loi. So at this point in time, we assume that Beregel means it was on, on the first day of Yom Tov. On the first day of the Yom Tov of Sukkot, Omar Loi, so Rabbi Yezer said to him, Eloi, he's referring to, to Rabbi Loi, Ein chomi shoiv seoregel. You, it seems that you're not from those who know how to rest and be where they're supposed to be on Yom Tov. Because Shahoyo Rabbi Yezer, Omer, Rabbi Yezer maintained, Meshabeach anies ha'atzlonim, I give praise to the lazy people, they don't go out of the house the whole year round. They just hang around at home. But on Yom Tov, that stands to their advantage because it says in the Pasuk, it says in the Pasuk that a person should be that on Yom Tov, you should be at home together with your wife and to make her happy. Be at home with your wife. So this Rabbi Loi came to be Mkabul Pnei Rabbi on Yom Tov to Rabbi Yezer. Rabbi Yezer says, you know, it seems that you're not keeping Yom Tov the way you should because you know that I hold that you should be at home together with your wife on Yom Tov. Asks the Gemara, Aini, can it possibly be that? not say, I have a source that there's a mitzvah chiyuv for a person to go on Yom Tov to be makabel upon him to greet his rebbe. Shenemer, as it says in the pasuk in Melachim, Vayoimer, Madua at Hileches, the wife of the Shunamis, said to the Isha Shunamis, Why are you going today to the tzaddik? A love, why are you going to him today? Loi Chodesh, Loi Shabbos, it's not Chodesh, it's not Shabbos. Vatoimer Shalim, there's no excuse not to go. So what do we see from there? Mechlal, we deduce from there, the Bechodesh with Shabbos, that Rosh Chodesh and Shabbos, Mechayi Vinish Lech Bulei Api Rabbi. That person should go to see his, his Rebbe, to greet his Rebbe. And from here we learn that there's, Rabbi Yitzchok learns, there's a Chiyuv to go to greet one's Rebbe on Yom Tov. So how can, 
How can we say that Rabbi Yezer held that you shouldn't go and greet your Rebbe on Yom Tov because you have to be at home with your wife? And here we see there's a source that you have to greet your Rebbe on Yom Tov. Kabolas Pnei Rabboi Beregel. Exactly how you learn Kabolas Pnei Rabboi Beregel from the Posuk that speaks about Shabbos and Chodesh is discussed in the Mepharshim. Says the Gemara, Loikasha. This is not a contradiction. Hard the Ozil Vaasi Bayama. In the event that your Rebbe is close by, it's within the Tchum of your city. Or or you've made an Eruv and you can go out to the Rebbe on Yom Tov and come back, then you can, then you've done both. You've done the mitzvah of going to meet your Rebbe at the same time as as being at home, spending time with your wife and making a happy on Yom Tov. When did Rebbe Yezer praise those that didn't go? That's if they would have to, if they couldn't go on Yom Tov, they would have to leave before Yom Tov to go to where their Rebbe was going to be on Yom Tov. And then they've forsaken the mitzvah of being happy on Yom Tov, spending time together with their wives. Continues the Gemara Ton Rabbonon. There was an incident with Rebbe Yezer. Sheshovas, it was Shabbos Chol Amoyed, and he was in the Golil Ha'el Yoyin. He was in the upper Golil, B'Sukosoy Shel Yoichanon B'Rabiloy B'Kisri. In the Sukkah of Yoichanon B'Rabiloy, in the place of Kisri, V'Omri Lo B'Kisri, and others say it wasn't in Kisri, it was actually in Kisri. V'Higia Chamo Sukkah, and it started getting hot. The sun was coming towards the sukkah, and the people inside were getting hot. Omar loy. So Yoichanon Rebbe Loi said to Rebbe Yezer, Ma'u she'efrois oleo sadin. What's the halacha? Am I allowed to spread a sheet over the sukkah in order to protect you from the sun? Or is then Issa to put even a temporary covering, a temporary roofing on Shabbos? Omar loy. Rabbi Yezer said he like, diverted his attention and started speaking about something completely different. We'll soon see why. He didn't answer his question. He just says, Ein nechokol shevet v'shevet misrael. There wasn't a single tribe in Klal Yisrael, shlehemet mimenu shoifet, that didn't have one of the shoiftim, one of the judges, the shoiftim. There was a long list of shoiftim that are mentioned in Tanakh, and every tribe had at least one of the shoiftim, and Rashi here goes through every tribe, or most of the tribes, which which shoifet came from that shoifet. He didn't answer the question. The suns got even closer to them. It was getting even hotter. And again, Yechanon Brebiloy said to Rebbe Yezer, Can I put a sheet? I want to protect you, my Rebbe Rebbe Yezer. I don't want you to get hot in the sukkah. Can I put a sheet over the sukkah? Or is there an issue with making an oil, a covering on Shabbos? Omar Loi, Again, Rebbe Yezer diverted it to a different topic. There wasn't a single tribe in Klal Yisrael that prophets didn't come from them. That the Shmuel Hanovi, the prophet Shmuel, he actually set, he anointed two kings, one from the tribe of Yehuda, that was David HaMelech, and one from the tribe of Binyamin, and that was Shaul HaMelech. So Rabbi Yezer just went off topic and did not answer the question. We'll soon see why. Now the sun had reached the feet, had reached Rabbi Yezer, and now it was a real issue. And Yechanon Berbiloi didn't just ask a third time. Not al Yechanon Sadin, he took a sheet, and he spread it out over him. Hifshil Rebeleza Talisoi Rebeleza, he draped his talis, his cloak, Lachirov, behind him, Vyatsa, and left the sukkah. He did not want to show or give any indication that he was okay with what Yechanon Berbeloi did. And now the Gemara says, Loimi Pneshe Fligu Bedvarim. The reason that Rebeleza was like, running away and not answering the questions he was answering off topic was not because he didn't want to teach his Talmud. Chas Shalom. Just Elom Epneshele Omar Dovash Le Shomam Epiraboi La Elom. Rabbi Yezer was Makbid, he was very particular never to give a ruling or to accept a ruling that he didn't hear explicitly from his rebbers. And since he hadn't heard from his teachers whether one's allowed to spread out a sadin, a sheet, on Shabbos, therefore he didn't want to say it was okay. And therefore, when, his, when 
Yechron Brebilo, he did it. He, he didn't want to benefit from it and he left. Says the Gemara, Heicha Ovitachi. How could, now the question is on the whole incident. What was the incident? That Rebeliezer was on Shabbos Cholamoy Tzukas. He was in the Galil O'Elyon by the Sukkah of Yechanon Rebeloi. Did we not learn at the beginning of the Omad that according to Rebeliezer, you're not allowed to go out from one Sukkah to the next? Heicha Ovitachi, how could he do this? The Omer Rebeliezer, Ein Yotzin Misukkah Le Sukkah. Rebeliezer says you're not allowed to go out from one Sukkah to the next. Answers the Gemara that when it says in the story that Shavas begalil elyon besukosi shaliyichon brebiloi, it was not talking about on Sukkos. It was Shabbos. It was a different Yom Tov. It was on Shavuos bechlal. He went. It was just going there. And you're sitting in the Sukkah on Shavuos because it was just comfortable to sit there. On Regal Achir Havoi, it was a different Yom Tov. And the question is, are you allowed to make an oil on Yom Tov? Did Rebeliezer not say, There's another quote we saw from Rebeliezer that you're supposed to stay at home and spend time with your wife in Yom Tov. So how could he go and be with his, with his, with his Talmud, with Yechonon Rebeliezer in Kisari? Or in Kisari? In, answers the Gemara, it wasn't even Yom Tov. Shabbos Savoy, it wasn't on Yom Tov. When it says, Maisa Rebeliezer, Rebeliezer Shashovas, it was a regular Shabbos. On Yom Tov, there's a din to have simcha together with your wife. On Shabbos, there's no such halacha. So he spent a Shabbos in, in the Golil, and it became hot. And Yechonon Rebbe Loi wanted to know whether he can put an oil. Continues the Gemara. Why can't you bring proof from something? Why didn't Yechonon Rebbe Loi bring proof from something Rebbe Yez himself said that would prove this halacha, whether one is allowed to make an oil aray, a temporary covering, a temporary roofing on Shabbos. Did none we learnt in a Mishnah? There's a Mishnah in, in Maseches Shabbos. If you have a shutter of a window, Rabbi Yezah says, If this shutter is tied to the wall of the room, of the building, and is tied with a short string, which means that the shutter is actually suspended mid-air, it's not lying on the floor, you're allowed to block up, you're allowed to close the window with this shutter. If it's not tied and suspended, then you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to block up this window, because you're being moisif, even though you're just going to put this shutter in temporarily, but if it's Kosher v'tolui, it's a part of the building. It's not considered that you're building. You're not doing anything. It's already there. But if it's not kosher v'tolui, even though it's just temporary, you're not allowed to add to the building, even though it's just temporary. You're not going to keep it closed forever. You're not allowed to do it. So we should have learned from here that you're not allowed to make an oil, even if it's going to be aray, on Shabbos. The Chachomim, the Chachomim say, Bein kach, bein kach. They say that since it's just a temporary type of addition to the window, you're just blocking it up now for whilst you want the window closed, then you're allowed to do that on Shabbos. Says the Gemara, the reason that there's a, that Yechonon Rabbi Loi and possibly Rabbi Yez himself, why they did differentiated between blocking up a window on Shabbos and the Sukkah is Hosom Hud Mevatil. Because in the case of the window, he's, he's putting it into the window. In the case of the window, the shutter, even though it's not going to be left there permanently, but he's blocking up the window. It's becoming an, an actual part. It's annexed to the building. It's much more similar to Boine. And Boine is an issue on Shabbos. However, in the case of the sheet, he's just leaving it there for a few minutes while the sun is beating down on them and it's very hot. Then he's clearly not trying to be mevatel. He's not trying to annex the sheet to the sukkah. He's just temporarily putting the sheet there. Maybe in that case, it would be mutter. And that's why Rebeliez himself didn't bring proof from his own statement regarding the window to this halacha of the schach. And that's for the same reason Rabbi Yechonon Berbiloi also didn't learn from the halacha of Pekak HaChaloin to the case of the Sadin. And that's why I asked Rabbi Yezer, can I put this sheet over the sukkah on, on Shabbos? Continues the Gemara, Tonu Rabbonon, Maisa Rabbi Yezer, Sheshavas Begolilo Elyon. There was an incident where Rabbi Yezer was residing on, in the, on Shabbos 
in the upper Golil, v'sha'aluhu shloishim halochis bilchas sukkah. They asked him 30 halochas of hill in ilchas sukkah. Shtei mesre omar lehem shomati. 12 of them, he says, yes, I've heard from my rebbers what the answer is. Shmoin osom omar lehem. On 18 of the questions, he, uh, he said to him, he said to them, loishomati. I didn't hear my rebbers discussing this question. He said it was the other way round, that of the 30 alochas, on 18 of them he said he'd heard from his Rebbe, and on 12 he said, I didn't hear. So they said to Rebbe Yeza, Why are you so particular? You, did hear, you didn't hear everything that you, uh, that you know and everything that you rule is only things you heard from your Rebbe. Omar lehem. Rabbi Yezu responded to them and said, His kaktuni loimar dovosh leishomati mi pira boisaim. Are you trying to force me to say a halacha that I didn't hear explicitly from my Rebbe? Well, there's something about me that you don't know. I want to tell you a little bit about myself and some of my customs, and then you'll understand. Mi yomayin all my days. Loikid mani odom be beis hamedrish. I was always the first one in the beis hamedrish. And I didn't sleep in the Beis HaMedrash. Not a fixed and proper steep sleep. Not even a nap. I didn't even doze off there. And when I left, there was nobody left in the Beis HaMedrash anymore. And I never spoke any idle, unnecessary chatter. And I never said something uh, any ruling that I didn't hear explicitly from my Rebbe's. And don't think that my Rebbe said things that I missed. No, because you can see, I was always in the base of Medrash, before everybody else, after everybody else. I didn't waste my time. I heard everything that there was to hear. And those, and if a halacha that's asked to me, I heard from my Rebbe's, I will say over. If not, I will not say over. Omro lova Rabbi Yechron ben Zakai. Rabbi Yechonon ben Zakei was the Rebbe of Rabbi Yezer, and this is where Rabbi Yezer got this from. It was said about Rabbi Yechonon ben Zakei that Miyomov in all his days, Loisoch Sichas Kulin, he didn't speak any idle chatter. Vuloiholach, Rashi says, Sichas Kulin is Divri Havai, or Schoik, just inappropriate to idle talk. Vuloiholach, Talad Amos, below Torah, he never went four Amos without Torah. Nor was four armies without wearing tefillin. There was nobody ever in the shul before him. He didn't sleep in the Beis HaMedrash. He didn't think thoughts, Torah thoughts, in alleyways that were dirty, that had, were inappropriate to think divrei Torah there. And when he left, there was never anybody left in the Beis HaMedrash. V'leimotze Odom, Yeshev v'doimim, nobody ever found him just sitting there doing nothing. Elo Yeshev v'shoyna, he was sitting and learning Torah. V'leiposach Odom deles l'talmidov, elo hu ba'atzmoi, he didn't allow other people to honor his students and open the door for them. He would open the door for them himself. And he would only say things that he heard explicitly from his rebbers, from his teachers. And he never said, He never said, that's it, it's time for everybody to close the Svarim and to go out of the Beis HaMedrash. There's no such thing. There's never a fixed time where we don't belong in the Beis HaMedrash. Besides, besides for Erev Pesach, where one has to prepare for Pesach and make sure that the children are prepared. They have to do the Korban Pesach and the other halachas of Erev Pesach. We discussed this in Psachim Dav Kuftes and on Erev Yom Kippur, where there's a mitzvah to eat on Erev Yom Kippur. So then he would tell his Talmidim, these two days in a year are the times where we leave the Beis HaMedrash and we go home. Other than that, there's no official time that you're not in the Beis HaMedrash learning. And consequent to this practice of Rabbi Yechonon ben Zakkai, as we saw, Rabbi Yezu did the same. He never said anything he didn't hear from his Rebbe, and that's why he didn't want to answer to Yechonon ben Rabbi about whether one's allowed to put the sheet over the sukkah on Shabbos or Yom Tov or not. He didn't hear from his Rebbe's, and that's why when he was asked the 30 alochas nilcha sukkah, he said, this I heard, this I didn't hear. He was very particular not to say any halachas 
he didn't hear explicitly from his rabbis. Continues the Gemara Tanu Rabbonon. Shmoinim Talmidim Hoyuloi Lehilil Azokin. Hillel the Elder had 80 Talmidim. Shloishim Mehem Ruuyim Shatish Shalem Shchinak Moshe Rabbeinu. On 30 of them, the greatest of the, of the 80, they were fit that the Shchina should be with them, like with Moshe Rabbeinu. Ushloishim Mehem, another 30 of them, Ruuyim Shatamud Lem Chamok Yeshua Binun. They were so big tzaddikim, they were fit that they could even make the sun stop. Like Yeshua bin Nun, he told the son, Doim, stop in your tracks. They were fit and worthy of doing that as well. Esrim Beinoinim, there were 20 that were the more average ones. And the Godel Shabakulam, the greatest of all the Talmudim, was Yonus and Ben Uziel. Cotton Shabakulam, the smallest of the 80 Talmudim, relatively, was Bechnum Ben Zakai. And we just heard about Rabbi Yechonon ben Zakkai, and he was of the smallest of the Talmidim of, of Hillel Azokin. And the greatest of the Talmidim was Rabbi Yechonon ben Uziel. Omro lova Rabbi Yechonon ben Zakkai, it was said about the smallest of the, 18, of the 80 Talmidim of Hillel Azokin, Shuloyhiniach Mikra u Mishno, he didn't leave anything in Mikra, which is le Psukim, learning Tanakh, and Mishno, is anything, all the Mishnayas, all the Brises and Shas. Gemara means all the understandings of the Tanoim. The previous Tanoim would say their teachings in short term and in, in using fewer words. And the later Tanoim would have to understand them and have to be Medaic and, and work out exactly what they meant. That was called Gemara. Halochis, all the Halochis, all the Halochal Moshe Messinais, many of which we've learned, Godasik, Godachis, Lavud, Doifin Akuma, Shiurim, Chatzitzin, Mechitzin, these are all Halochas that we're already familiar with, Esen, Etiois, Arova, and Nisuch Hamayim we're still going to learn about, Va'agodois, all the Agaditas, Digduke, Teira, every time when there's an extra letter, what's it coming to teach us? Every time there's a letter less, what's it coming to teach us? They were familiar with all that. V'dikduke soifrim, and all the halachas midrabonon, when the chachomim, they would understand the ways of the people and know when it was appropriate, when it was necessary to make an extra stringency, an extra halacha, an extra gezeira to keep people away from doing averus. They were familiar with, and this Rabbi Yechonon ben Zakkai, he was familiar with all these dikduke soifrim. Kalim v'chamurim, all the kal People can make Kalvachemes on their own. He was full, fully versed in Kalvachemes. Gzeir Shavas, all those Gzeir Shavas, he knew them. Tkufais, all the astronom- astronomical cycles, he was well versed in them. Gmatrias, we know the numerical value and of di- the different ways of arranging the letters of the Aleph base. Sichas Malachi Asharas, the talk of the Malachim, Vasichas Sheidim, Vasichas Dekolim, Rashi says he doesn't know what that means. Mishlo is Koivsim, they were accustomed to saying analogies, Mishalim, but instead of saying their rebuke direct, they would say some story about some launderer, or about the Mishlo is Shualim, or they would speak about the foxes. Dava Godel, Vadava Cotton, this Smallest of the 80 Talmidim, Rabbi Yechelen ben Zakeh, was well versed in the big things and the small things. What are they, says the Gemara, Dova Godel is Maisa Merkova, Dova Kotten is Avayas Dabayi Verova. All those questions that we have in Shas from Abayi Verova, they were all already well versed by the Tanoim. They just for- got forgotten later on, and Abayi Verova later in the Amiroim times, they would ask the questions. But in the times of the Tanoim, they were well versed in them. And on Rabbi Yechonon ben Zakkai it was, ke- was said this posuk, that to his friends, to, so to speak, to those that Hashem loves, he inherits thing, everything, and he fills all their storehouses. So Hashem helped Rabbi Yechonon ben Zakkai fill all his storehouses of knowledge. He knew everything. Says the Gemara, if this was the level of the smallest of the 80 Talmidim of Hillel Azokin, you can imagine the greatest of the Talmidim, Yonason ben Uziel, how much he must have known. 
Omro lov al Yonis and Benazil, it was said on, about Yonis and Benazil, Beshosh Yosef Oisik Batayra, when he was sitting and learning Tayra, Kol Oif Shepirea Cholov, when a bird came close by to him, the Malochim who were there listening to his Tayra, the fiery Malochim, Miyad Nisraf, those fiery angels that were sitting there listening to the Tayra, and it wasn't Stam Divrei Tayra, it was Tayra that was said with tremendous Simcha, as in Sinai, where the Tayra was given with fire with tremendous simcha so too it was learnt with tremendous simcha and those fiery malachim would burn up any bird that was flying nearby nisraf would get burnt and the ritva brings from the ushalmi that this is if the talmidim of hillel azokin could do this you can imagine what hillel azokin himself the rebbe the ushalmi says that the rebbe hillel azokin the birds would not only be burned when they were close by, four Amas close by, even if they were further away, there would be an even stronger fire and would burn those birds as well. And Emir Tzashem, in the next year, we're going to continue from here.